Hello. Today we are going to be reenacting two scary movies. So we're going to be like reacting to llama arts. Like we're going to be reacting to some scary stuff. I suggest that you go subscribe to his channel because he has like, he has a good YouTube channel. He's really pretty good. Llama arts. I have no idea what I'm spelling. Mr. Night, <laughs> I'm trying to do it. Mr. Mr. Nightmare, okay. He is the most scariest. You know what I'm Look, he goes. Today we're gonna be reacting to 14. No, I creepy because we're gonna be reacting to this one. Hold on, I'm gonna get this out of the way so you can see half of it. It was November of 2006. I was a 16-year-old kid living in the town of Altoona, Iowa. I went to bed early one night because I had to work the early shift at McDonald's. As I slept, I had a dream that I was running through downtown Des Moines, but I wasn't on a jog. I was running from something. As I ran around the corner of a building, I came face to face with my pursuer. A tall man wearing a trench coat and a top hat stood in front of me. The only thing visible of his face was his eyes. They were abnormally large with black pupils, and it looked at me as if it wanted something. After what felt like hours, he reached out his bony hand as if he wanted me to go with him. I woke up violently from my dream, and after catching my breath, I peered around my room to see if I was safe. As I stood up from my bed, I noticed that I could see my breath. Feeling confused, I checked my window. It was latched shut. I then walked over and checked my vent. I could still feel warm air coming from it. As I sat back down on my bed, I tried to figure out what exactly was going on. That's when the figure from my dream appeared at the foot of my bed. I scrambled back to my headboard. What do you want? I asked, trying to hide the shakiness in my voice. With the same bony finger, it pointed at me. Growing up in a religious home, I believed what I was looking at was a demon. School lockdown, those are really scary. I'm 22 years old, fresh out of college, and I recently got a job at my old high school as a sort of computer intern in the school basement. The basement of the school is very messy and disorganized, but there is a small three-person office that's actually very nice down there. It has three nice big desks, two mini fridges, a flat screen TV mounted on the wall, and oh so satisfying air conditioning, a luxury the students and teachers cannot enjoy in the school. And of course, all the school servers and other computery stuff. I got the job because three of my old computer teachers flat out adored me. I could actually consider them as real friends, not just teacher figures. So they all helped tremendously in landing me this job. It's been great. Until something that happened a few weeks ago. My two co-workers that shared the office with me, Dave and Gary, weren't in the office at the time. They were upstairs working on papers or whatever. I was eating my sandwich during my lunch break when I got a phone call from one of the women in the front office telling me the school was on lockdown and that somebody possibly armed had entered the school. There wasn't much that I could do other than turn off the lights because, surprisingly, as nice as this little office was, it didn't have an actual door to it, just a big opening, and the door to the whole basement didn't even have a working lock. Hold on. He said that there's no lock on the door, or I mean, there's no open door, and he said that door's not have a lock. Ooh, you're gonna bust it on that one. Lock. For my own safety, I did turn off all the lights in the office and my computer screen. I kept my phone on the desk, texting both Gary and Dave, but they wouldn't respond. I sat down there in the dark, playing games on my phone for like 20 minutes, waiting for the call from up front to tell me to resume working. I had no idea what was happening. I couldn't hear what was going on upstairs from down here. But I was not allowed to make any calls until I was informed that the lockdown was over. 
Then the noisy basement door opened. As the creaking echoed across the basement and into my office, I sat up from my seat, wondering if I should call out Gary or Dave. I was eager to get some info from them. Someone then came running down the stairs, and their footsteps were approaching my office. I pushed away my chair and crawled under my desk. Somebody entered the office, but did not turn on the lights. Hello, Sydney. There was just silence. I can't even describe the fear I was experiencing. I felt like if I made one sudden noise, I'd be a dead man. Suddenly, my phone dinged as I got a text message. I felt my entire world shrivel up and die at that one moment as I clenched my teeth in fear. Footsteps suddenly moved closer to me until I finally dove out from under the desk in capitulation, begging whoever it was not to kill me. And just then, someone grabbed my arm and pulled me up. It was some guy in a red plaid button-up, jeans, and a reddish black cap. He told me, it's okay, I'm just down here hiding with you. What's going on up there? I whispered to him. He kind of ignored my question and asked me if there's an exit down here. I told him, yeah, around that way. Before he could do anything else, I asked him, who are you? There was a brief moment of silence. Before he started explaining he was coming in to pick up his son, when a teacher told him to hide. After his explanation, I checked my phone and saw the text I received was from Dave. It said, Dude, this is fucking crazy. Some guy with a gun shot Mr. Buckley. He's wearing a red shirt and hat. Whatever you do, don't come upstairs. I was about to reread that text out loud to the man until I realized. I looked up and felt my stomach sink. The man seemed to catch on to my suspicious stare. Panicking, all I could think to do was to run for the upstairs. A gunshot echoed through the basement and I could hear the bullet ricochet off something metal in the darkness. But thank God the bullet missed me and I made it upstairs. Fortunately, police were waiting at all exits, including the basement exit, and caught the man the second he opened the door. More good news, our teacher Mr. Buckley survived the gunshot. It was later determined that the man and Mr. Buckley had some beef for whatever reason, but that was never revealed. All we know is that Mr. Buckley couldn't have done anything that would have warranted this kind of reaction. And I know that the sound of that gunshot will forever echo in my mind. Growing up in a religious home, I believed what I was looking at was a demon. I told the creature to leave. A bus stop horse I'm not gonna put on the really creepy ones. That is freaking terrifying. Oh my god. Ooh, that's. I haven't seen that one yet. Thank you. Let's try. Let's try something Christmassy. For some reason. Try. Let's just try it. And plus, this is gonna be the last video of here. I'm just gonna, we're gonna wrap it up. This is the last one for terrifying. Let's go and subscribe to you guys. This is nightmare that the same guy. On for at least 10 seconds. My dad got up and walked over to the door, placed one hand on the lock and one hand on the doorknob. You need something? There was no answer. He unlocked our side of the door and swung it open. Their side of the duplex was completely pitched. I didn't even restart it. I, I think my brother must have watched it. There are four true Christmas ones. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. So we were having our Christmas Eve dinner. Turkey, stuffing, and other dishes that you would expect to get on Thanksgiving night. We don't have a big family. It was my grandparents and uncles from my mom's side of the family. At the time, we lived in a duplex with some guy and his girlfriend on the other side. We never really saw them much. Strangely, we had a door that connected our sides. And no, that's not something that most duplexes have. It had a very unique kind of lock, though. It had to be unlocked from both sides to be opened, and it could open in either direction. I only saw it open once before the two moved in, 
ever since the door had been locked, at least on our side. While we were sitting at the dinner table eating, the doorknob to the door that separates the sides of our duplex twisted and turned before the lock would block it. It was not accidental, as it was going on for at least 10 seconds. My dad got up and walked over to the door, placed one hand on the lock and one hand on the doorknob. You need something? There was no answer. He unlocked our side of the door and swung it open. Their side of the duplex was completely pitch black. It seemed as if nobody was home. Well, guys, we're going to wrap that up there. I'm sorry this wasn't, like, a really full video of this because I couldn't, like, I didn't have any time or anything. So we're just going to wrap it up there today, and we're going to do more tomorrow. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll do, like, another one, like, that are the really scary ones if you're brave enough because those are really, really scary. Go check out the channel. Subscribe. Use Obey underscore Kibis and Ninja, and I'll see you, boy. That was a good video.